Hello, Gonky. <laughs> Hello, Mover. How are you? Okay. You couldn't open that while the whole intro thing was going on? We had two Caught minutes and 30 seconds. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me off guard. Yeah, so it's not like it's timed or anything. Oh, boy. All right. So it's just the two of us. So good luck with that. Yeah, Doug's not here. So he's, uh, he's under the weather today. So we uh, we hope a speedy recovery for Douglas. We have yeah. no no guests. Not that we could follow last week with Mace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or the week before much. with the flight dock. Yeah. So it's just it's got me a mover tonight. So. We're in trouble. Dude. We're in trouble. Yeah, Mover, how was the, your weekend? Oh, dude. You know, I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> just a bad. I, I know this, why. This whole show <laughs> might be a mental health minute. This We might, which by the way, if you guys have any ideas, we hadn't figured that out yet because it's just us. But um, we'll read the chat if anybody comes up with something. But if not, this whole show might just be a, a venting session. Hey, so in more or less just depressing news, I finished editing the sci-fi book that i've been putting off for a long time that's awesome yeah dude uh it's not terrible you know so i i shelved it you know it's a bad sign when your editor's like hey um did you just get in a rush and i was like oh crap did you write so, this <laughs> yeah she's like Are you, were you in were you in a hurry this is not i'm like oh crap so then i shelved it because i didn't want to mess with it plus I was trying to do uh, a thing called Air Command and Staff College, which is a giant waste of time. Uh, just, just a tour. It's so funny. I'm in the middle. Which, by the way, I, I, some of them watch it because I, you know they make you do these stupid discussions, uh -oh. and you got to quote and stuff. Which I hope. I, my goal is for one day somebody to quote our show, to quote Gonky. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm doing this, and the guy's like, "Yeah, for legal reasons, this is a joke." Uh, does it's not Doug's not here. <laughs> DOD. Uh, good job, Donkey. You did yeah, a thing. Look at that. Um, so I, I, the, the, like the other students are like, Hey, please don't roast me in the show. You know, this is, you know, he's doing the little reply. Cause you have to, like, that's the whole thing. You got to write a discussion question and you got to quote all these other people. And then you got to respond to these other people. And it's like this self-licking ice cream cone where nobody really knows anything about leadership, but we're going to talk about it anyway. And we're going to quote people that really don't know anything about leadership. And they're the ones who ran the whole military into the ground. But I digress. It's a whole nother topic for a whole nother thing. <sighs> this is a venting therapeutic session for you. It is. It's the whole <laughs> mover runs mover. But I finished, I finally finished that one class that, that totally destroyed me. And then I was like, it's time to finish editing this book that I've been working on for over a year. It's the longest it's ever taken me to write a book. And it's sci-fi, because sci-fi is difficult. I'm not a smart guy. I don't know a lot about science. So it's very tough for me. I have to research everything. As you know, on this show, we don't really research stuff that we do. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so... Makes it more fun. Uh, now, hey, yeah. is this dude? Is this a sequel to? Or I, no, I don't know much it's about brand it. Brand new. Of course, you don't read my book. Why would you? Could you well, not, like, there, I read the couple. I read yeah, the couple pages where Gonky was in it. <laughs> no, it was, it's, it's, it was really this good. This is brand new. Okay. Because I got inspired. I'm like, I want to write science fiction, and I I want to make it, you know, kind of quasi like realistic, and throw some fighter stuff in there. Write what you know, right? And so that's what I did. And I've already, and the reason I even got inspired to like finish editing is because I got some ideas for the sequel to this book. But again, life has gotten in the way. I haven't started writing that, but mm. well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, not, to, not to steal your thunder, but you know, I, I Why actually we have, can? well, I actually have a book that has some words in it <laughs> coming out as well. So it's my yeah. first, it'll be my first attempt at uh, pictures and words. Uh, which oh, is, okay. you know, for Navy guys is pretty challenging. So, yeah, uh, kids book. Well, yeah. yeah, you're you're blazing the path for me because that's my next project is a kids book. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been challenging, man, because, uh, you know, I don't I'm even less creative and talented than you are. So, like, I have to find people that uh, are actually good to help me with like the illustrations and all that stuff. So it's been, it's been a cool process and it kind of, you know, when you write a kid's book about aviation, it kind of, I kind of like went back to when I was a kid, which uh, mentally is not that long ago. Yeah. And uh, it's fun. It's fun. So hopefully it 
turns out well and uh you know hopefully my kid likes it and then maybe somebody else will like it uh <laughs> yeah you just reminded me dude uh before we get into all the serious topics i've got a topic for you dude i had a question for you yeah bro yeah this is uh, this is re recently reappeared because the I know you're like Encino Man or Blast from the Past, one of those shows. Like the internet, everything that is old in the internet is new to you because you just got the <laughs> internet recently. You know, you've just you've just like walked into the technological era. Yeah, so great. I have a riddle for you. Okay, and I would I would like your your fighter pilot answer. Okay, so oh, imagine no, a 747 dude. <laughs> is sitting on a conveyor belt as wide as uh, and long as a runway. So that's that's pretty wide. The conveyor yeah. belt is designed to exactly match the speed of the wheels moving in the opposite direction. Can the plane take off? Ignore the picture because the the treadmill is actually the length of a let's call it thirteen thousand feet of runway. Does it take off? Well, yes, it it takes off, but <laughs> um, don't lie, well, donkey. Uh huh. Yeah, go ahead. Go with your full disclosure. Yeah, so full disclosure, when 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 Mover first ran this past me, I'm like, no, dude, it's not going to take off. It's just going to sit there. And he's like, do you even know how airplanes fly? And I thought about it for a minute. And then I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I ruined. I ruined. That, uh, that was a golden opportunity, man. That could have been on was. the show live. I ruined it. I, I thought <laughs> you would forget. I thought you might forget. Yeah. And I I was hoping you might forget. In no, fact, man. it's already, it's a look at the comments are already going. The comments are already juiced up the comments. I, dude, I studied uh, naval aviation aerodynamics. <laughs> so I know all there is to know about how planes fly. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. People are trying to. God. People are. It's it's already happening, Donkey. Yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. Comment section. <laughs> look. <laughs> People are arguing with you, dude. So where I even saw this was Everyday Astronaut posted it. And he made his statement. Yes, the airplane will fly. And then people in the comments are arguing yeah. with this guy. Well, like uh, even Mythbusters, right? They did it. So um, yeah, Mythbusters you, did you, it. Probably YouTube it. Probably YouTube it and, and see it, you know, for yourself. But I feel like it's apparent for anybody who's ever flown anything with an afterburner and tried to hold the brakes. Uh, <laughs> that would be a <laughs> smaller group of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, again. All right. So let's talk about yeah. the. Uh, well, now hold on. Oh, do uh, we want to do we want to anchor on this? Do we have more to talk no, about. Buy a no, book. Yeah, buy movers. <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, you know, another full disclosure because I I did some homework today because I'm tired of people telling me I don't know what I'm talking about, which is oh. largely true. <clears throat> but uh, mover just sends me a text the other day, like World War Three has started, and this is how like disconnected I am from everything now i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> yeah. and, he, and then he starts telling me about that's the, true uh, the uh, iran israel thing i'm like what false no. alarm yeah, yeah false I'm like, alarm. I, this is a joke so um but yeah so mover is literally uh my news ticker and i only get mm -hmm. it if he actually texts me so i text it to him in the in the fashion that a news outlet would i'm like breaking news world war three because that's the only way you'll respond <laughs> world war three has begun and you're like what and then it's like oh yeah well here's what happened well on the island of happy golden retrievers mover there is no war <laughs> dude um, i wish i could live in the present like you and luna <laughs> which by the way next experiment all right mythbusters this is our next um this is our next mythbuster for today the luna cam is live oh yes notice there is no luna right Last week, there was no Correct. Luna. My theory is that she will not show. She 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 has shown up every other week except when Mace has been on the two times. Yep. So T minus 49 it, more minutes. And she, if she right shows there. up at exactly 9 p.m. Central. Yeah. Then we know then somehow she knows she's either watching the show, in which case I love you, girl. Uh, <laughs> somehow she can smell <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> uh who's a good girl but uh you know i don't know i don't i'm just saying that's our that's that's our show tonight yeah if we can make it all the way to nine o'clock with the the limited topics we have and no doug man like we're just gonna be and sitting no here doug. like doug take care oh hey <laughs> yeah well yeah. so we have to talk about world war three mm. or at least 
Um, How about we just talk about the Middle East, man? Israel, United States, and allies have intercepted um, a lot of stuff. I don't yeah, know. Like so let's 300 let's, let's talk about this, this little article here, okay? And the reason I chose this article because it's all over the, the X, the Twitter, which we're going to break it down in segments. This is our first segment on this because there's a lot to talk about. But originally, the mud hen people, which pains me to say, <laughs> the world's greatest bomber, had all the glory. And then today, at the 11th hour before this show, they updated it and said a U.S. official added the... I'll even forgive them for calling them the Fighting Falcons oh. because now the F-16 has shot some down too, which I'm like, oh, thank you. Notably absent, however, is fifth gen. Yeah. All the Abyssa Millias and the Raptor nerds. Red Ball. And Red Ball. Oh, yeah. They were broken. <laughs> Cold iron, we got cold iron. iron. Yeah, uh, they could not be <laughs> bothered for something. They can only come out when the Su fifty seven comes out to play. All right, so here's our article for the day. I'm going to zoom in because Doug does that. Dude, I don't. I think I, can you wow. read this? Can you see this? Uh, I, Air I Force. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Do right. it, man. Can I go? All right. Yeah. So F fifteen E Strike Eagles, the Mud Hen, and F sixteen Fighting Falcons. Shot down dozens of Iranian Iranian drones as they were heading toward targets in Israel on April 13th. That was a couple days ago, as of this episode. Uh, it was Strike Eagles from the 494th Fighter Squadron and the 335th Fighter Squadron. I think that's Lake and Heath. Uh, yep. Downing more than 70 Iranian drones. But on April 15th, the U.S. official noted that F-16s were involved in the shootdowns as well. A Patriot battery and... Iraq took down a ballistic missile and the USS Arleigh Burke and USS Kearney in the Eastern Med took down four to six ballistic missiles. The officials added Joe Biden then called them and said, thank you. Good job. <laughs> uh, the attack consisted of more than 100 ballistic missiles, which we're going to look at here separately. 30 land attack cruise missiles and 150 drones. They said it intercepted missiles and drones uh, launched from Iran. Oh, launched from Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Holy crap. U.S. and Israeli officials said that 99% of the drones and missiles were intercepted. I think like seven weren't um, of this. So the close cooperation with U.S. military and the IDF has led to the formation of strong coalition that proved itself last night in the face of Iran's aerial attack. While Israel mounted its defense with the Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 surface-to-air interceptors, and fighters, U.S. coordinated the air, de air defense for the coalition forces at the Com Combined Air Operations Center, also known as the CAOC, Al-Yadid, uh, where AFSENT boss, Lieutenant General Alexis, oh boy, I'm not even going to try that. Uh, he was the regional air defense commander. Biden ordered extra F-15s and destroyers, which carry the highly capable Aegis air defense system. Uh, and then here is him saying, do we want to watch this? Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas. Just kind of. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> Just <kidding>. oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that was Just, awful, dude. For, sorry, for, man. Just uh, We take whatever stuff. assets we have that are in theater under our tactical control, direct support. It's been a lot that's been accomplished. Uh, the UK was also involved. Uh, the Typhoon uh, was also in the region. Uh, shooting down drones, and I Did, think didn't the Jordanians use F-16s? Yeah, I was, that's what I was about to, to get. Uh, <laughs> the, I, there was, and I don't know if this is verified, deep intel, actual intel, no intel. Um, the Jordan. Oh boy, that one's not a good look. That zoom works, uh, huh? <laughs> that zoom works. <laughs> yeah, the Jordanian princess, which, uh, pretty cool. She shot some down herself. I don't know if that's true or not. I just saw it on Twitter, and you know everything on Twitter is true. <clears throat> but yeah. she shot some down. But okay, let's, I mean, this is a serious thing. Luckily, none managed to go through. The, I mean, we're talking three layers of defense, right? So, uh, and there's different pundits. I want to get your thoughts on this, Gonky, as somebody who's been in the Middle East. A lot. The Iranians telegraphed like a big dog. 
Yeah. Right. They knew they were, they even, there was an article about them asking nearby countries, like letting them know that, Hey, we're doing this. We're going to be flying through your airspace. You know, this is going to happen. Uh, it, it was in the news even for days before this happened. And in fact, they had their parade where they rerouted all their, their air parade where they rerouted the Tomcat Tomcats, uh, away, uh, from their parade, you know, in the different part of the country, everybody kind of knew this was going to happen. So there's two schools of thought. One is, you know, the Israelis killed um, their general, which is the same level guy that we killed way back in the day. And in that scenario, they bombed our base, but didn't hit anything. And so it was one of those, we telegraphed it. We kind of gave you a warning. We knew. And, uh, you know, it, it, it gave them a show of force because in that part of the world, the Iranian people are not bad. It's the assholes at the top that are bad. And so the way a dictator or the way a, a, a totalitarian regime stays in power is by keeping the thumb off on the people. And the way you maintain power is by flexing, you know, showing that you're strong. So we can't let something like because they're off telling their people that it was a great success and, you know, all the propaganda and all that stuff in the in that part of the world that works and you know they they think it's a great success and now they're like hey look we did our thing any retaliation we're gonna have to do this again end of story the second school of thought is that that's not the case the fact that they sent 300 different types of projectiles to overwhelm which is something that we've seen in the ukrainian or you know the ukrainian ukrainian conflict where they overwhelm with these small drones, these smaller projectiles, ballistic missiles, stuff like that. And it just so happens that we were successful. You know, what if, what if we had failed? And then there's the third that they're prodding, you know, that, that that's their technique, right? They prod, they poke, they, they, they have now, they now have a footprint of how U S and Israeli defenses work. They depleted, uh, you know, several billion dollars worth of, assets to shoot these stuff these things down and this is just kind of a precursor to something else what do you think i mean of these three kind of what what, what makes the most sense based on your experience <clears throat> well <laughs> um i don't know man i would i would say uh I mean, you hit the nail on the head. There, there's, I, I think there's a lot more going on there than obviously the, the media has shown us. But, you know, you bring up the point of like, hey, you know, a, a weaker regime trying to control the people, not losing face. Well, you know, just from some of the research I did today, I would argue that probably both sides are a little bit like that, you know, so nobody wants to lose face in this. So, yeah, the Israelis attacked uh, the Iranian embassy, right? Killed their general. They ha The Iranians have to do something, right? Um, you know, I, I, I think they telegraphed it. I think it's a, I, I think it's kind of a show, man. I mean, think about this. You said those F-15 shot down 70 drones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they're Lake and Heath birds. I mean, I, I don't know. I think they're Lake and Heath. I, I'm not sure. I would have to, we don't have. E even if they're not, I mean, logistically, like, mm -hmm. you know, they launched now granted, you know, the drones got to travel quite a ways to get to where they're going and, and whatnot. But like, that's, that's a lot of firepower that has to be airborne amongst even strike eagles. So there, there has to be some planning involved. They had like, there, ha you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. And for sure. And logistically, like if we just put ourselves as fighter pilots in the cockpits of the Vipers, cause I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right. So I need the gas. I need the yeah. gas. <laughs> well, so, well, we don't have, no, you don't get the gas when you're comparing it to a mud end. They still have more fuel, but you know, we have, yeah. they have half as much SA because there's two of them. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> but in that scenario, you know, dude, that's a lot of targets. That's a, that's a saturated thing. Friendly fire is, is probably a huge consideration, you know, target recognition, target ID, uh, weapons tight, like you're, yeah. there's so many considerations for you in the, in the jet to shoot these things down. I mean, I remember in, a, in a, Iraq, one drone, you know, that was a big deal. I mean, 70 trying to ID well, intercept all that stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like, imagine, 
you know, I'm sitting alert on the carrier and they're like, holy cow, you know, there's 300 projectiles coming launch. You know, like uh, if, if you go with the ROE during peacetime, it's significantly different than the ROE during a known possible attack, right? Yeah. A known attack is going to be a lot more aggressive, which I think in order to shoot 70 of these things, I mean, you're talking probably, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, man, 79 X's and AMRAMs, right? I mean. Yeah, I don't he, think they're using the gun. I think they're, they're no, shooting 9 X's more than likely. Yeah, and you're not, uh, you know, uh, it, that's that's a big deal to hose one of those off. I mean, we we shot them in training. And it's like, you know, if there's a, <laughs> yeah, well, but, but right, if there's if there's a boat within like a hundred miles, they're like, nope, call it off. Yeah. You know, no, it's too dangerous, right? So, um, yeah. in my mind, there was a lot of uh, there had to be a lot of telegraph, and, um, you know, I'm kind of waiting to see what happens now, uh, after the fact. You know, kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but. Yeah, I well, I mean, we could talk about that part here. So, I mean, now, I mean, what do you, what could, do you think? By the time this is live, like when we, when we make this clip, it could be overcome by events, right? Because right yes. now, as we speak, the Israelis are saying they're author, they're talking about a response. So, you know, if if diplomacy fails, which I'm not saying one way or the other. I mean, they have the right to defend themselves. You know, the the I think people go back and they say, well, tit for tat, right? The Israelis killed the general and now they're doing this, but that's bullshit. The Iranians have been poking through proxies for decades. Like this is not the first thing they've done. Like th they have been doing stuff for a while. It's not just, oh, you killed our general. We're doing this. This is the first time they have overtly done something. But it's not the first time they've been involved in something. So I think it's well within their rights, the Israelis, to respond. Now, will they? I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm not in the in the room with them. I'm not part of the high level meetings. I I don't know. You know what they're thinking. However, it is possible that they use their F-35s to take out nuke sites. Uh, it is possible that they go after the. Um, areas that shot the the missiles you know the military targets that that shot these missiles at them right there is there is a possibility because you know they they do have the capability to do that so uh i i kind of agree with both sides right I, I i agree with you i say hey this was just for show but i think it was um irresponsible because what happens you know you can you can give them you can telegraph all day, but it's like you've talked about with the Houthi drones in previous times, where it's like, what happens when that one gets through? I mean, can you imagine if one of those cruise missiles had landed, you know, downtown Tel Aviv? You know, can you imagine? Because, I mean, dude, it, it yeah, it's it's lucky lucky and skill that they stopped it, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's. I don't know. The other thing is, you know, the Israeli air defense is extremely robust, right? They call it the Iron Dome, right? And yeah. I mean, that's, it's capable of repelling, I'm going to say real attacks. I don't know if that's the right word, you know, not drones that are just, <laughs> for lack of better words, droning in. What? Um, yeah, it's for rockets. It's mostly, I mean, that part is for the rocket. Like they have a layered right. defense system. <clears throat> right. And, you know, the whole, I, I don't know the whole tit for tat thing, you know, so I grew up in Saudi Arabia. I was there all through the eighties and nineties. And, you know, unfortunately there was a lot of, a lot of violence, uh, in that, in that region. And, you know, uh, at the school I went to, there was a lot of, uh, the, a lot of the kids I went to were sympathetic to the, you know, the Palestinians and their cause. And I, you know, I can see, I don't take sides in this man. Cause I can see both sides of it. I was there through uh, Gulf war, uh, 1991. And I, I saw, uh, firsthand some things that came out of the media that ended up not being tr not being true uh, in order to shape the minds of Americans Westerners so it's too early to kind of in my mind just my <laughs> fighter pilot opinion it's a little too early to uh, you know declare hostile at least for me but if we're talking about just the you know the like tactically what the heck just happened uh, and the fact that the Israelis with help from Jordan which you know it, it's crazy to me that other Arab countries were, 
you know, helping yeah. them. Right. Well, they don't want they don't want to see this. I mean, that's that's part of it is they like, oh, whoa, 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 easy. Right. Right. Which which is great. But it's crazy to think that, like, you know, we've been talking about they like, literally launched 300 projectiles. At them. And I don't care if they're slow moving drones like you're saying, man, like the odds of stuff getting through with with just sheer numbers is high. And thankfully, at least uh, from what I've seen, you know, the casualties have, uh, you know, been low. Um, I don't know if anybody's been killed from these attacks. I I, I didn't see no, any there of was that. a little girl that got injured. Was uh, there injured, severely. though? I mean, I, I mean, thankfully, like, no one. Yeah, I was like it was and she was she was I don't know where it was, but there was like a little girl that got hurt pretty bad. Yeah, well, that, um, that that sucks, man. But I given given the sheer volume of uh, things shot at Israel, um, I just think even if this is a dog and pony show, dude, I mean, holy cow, really lucky. <laughs> right well, it's a hostile now. act. It doesn't. I mean, right. so it, if I if I tell you I'm going to shoot you and I shoot you and miss, you know, or your bulletproof vest stops it. <clears throat> am I still not committing attempted murder? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, it, it is a hostile act, but you know, in, in the big picture, you know, obviously the ball right now is in Israel's court, right? Yeah. It's their, it's their turn to do or not do. I think the United States stance is a, you know, we're not going to help you as far as, you know, participating in any kind of strike that could change tomorrow. Who knows? But um, you know, it, you know, if it keeps going back and forth, the natural tendency is to escalate. Then we end up in like movers text or or three, which is not what I think anybody well, wants. Arguably they don't need the help. Correct. I mean, the Israelis have a history of not needing help in situations like this. Yeah, I, I know, but you know, nobody wants, you know, I, you know, nobody, nobody wants anything long and drawn out, especially, I mean, we just got done with a Middle East conflict that was long and drawn out. Right. I mean, yeah. um, country like Israel, man, I mean, that's their, you know, that's their home. Right. I mean, the, the worst thing you want to have is just violence on the other side mm -hmm. of your fence. Right. So I don't know. It's dude. Uh, it's, it's uh, interesting times we're in the, I, I will say that the videos of the, air defense over oh, yeah. Israel well, at night was was all right spectacular i mean i i witnessed patriot batteries taking out a uh, scud missile like live in 90 91 and i mean the whole scud attack thing as a kid to me was insane and it kind of brought back <laughs> like mini ptsd right um you know memories of that um so i mean but it was it was pretty spectacular that the light show going on do you have a yeah so i was well, that's a good segue uh because we've got the idf intercept uh and then we've got the exo atmospheric intercept uh, we got a couple intercept videos we can look at so this is the idf uav intercept but i don't think there's no real context to it um i'm not i think this is like a, a f-35 tracking another like a surface to air intercept i don't know that this is uh from that but anyway here's the i mean it could be do you recognize that pod <clears throat> by chance i think that's from an f-35 think so i think that's their yachts it looks similar to the, some of the ones we've watched before so that's the shahid i think drone Look at that thing. Yeah. I want to bring this up for the UAV crowd, the uh, UFO crowd. See, there's no propulsion. That's just how they look. Every time we do one of these, they're like, well, like, that's just how, that's how they look. He, he was a little look. late, a little late light, light speeding himself out of the Wes. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's gravity. No, no, that's just how it looks. Yeah. Like, see, like that? Interception of cruise missiles. That's what a cruise missile looks like. It's yeah, a lot like moving. the videos that we've seen. Except there's no boom. Now you see that one's got a heat. Yeah. Because they're tracking from behind. Yeah. All right. That's the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I mean, we, 
you know, I met, I was talking to uh, uh, old F4 buddy of ours today and I'm like, man, why do you think, you know, on the, you know, with the Houthi drone attacks and these ones in Israel, like, it seems like uh, fourth gen fighters are doing all the work. And yeah, I don't know. Remember, what do you think his, his philosophy is maybe they're using F 35 as command and control, you know, like dishing out the targeting. I don't know. I mean, I, so if that was the F 35 video, that's exactly what it is. You know, they're, you so? they're up there sorting targets and stuff like that. I think also there's a little bit of OPSEC. Nah, yeah. You know, if, if you're going that. in on the assumption that they're prodding defenses and stuff like that, why would you telegraph what your fifth gen fighter can do? You know, cause <laughs> Signals intelligence, all that stuff. I mean, that plays in, yeah. you know, if they're, especially if other actors are out there, Chinese, Russians, whoever are out there like sniffing. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, I, cause he said that's what they did when they first got their uh, strike eagles back in the day. Yeah. They used them as kind of like airborne, but I had thought, I thought they had a, a pretty good AWACS as well. I could do that. I don't know. I, but, I don't, I mean, for the Israeli side, I don't know, but, um, you need something that can track small targets, yeah. small, slower targets, a uh, hundred knots, you know, radars typically start to have trouble. I mean, think of a helicopter, right? Small Cessnas and stuff like that. You know, they had mechanically scan radars right. have trouble with it. I don't know about ESA. Did ESA have trouble with slower stuff? ESA Usually ESA is pretty, pretty good about everything. Yeah, the only honestly, uh, the mech radar I thought was a little better in BFM, but that's because most yeah. of the time I didn't have a helmet. But uh, dude, he also brought up a good point. Uh, I was talking to him today. He goes just offhand. He's like, "Man, I hope they're not using good stuff to knock them down." And I was like, "Dude, you know they're using top of line AIM one twenties to take these ten thousand dollar drones out." <laughs> uh, I mean, are they though? That's the thing. Of, the like, cruise I, missiles are high dollar, but yeah, but. The other counter argument to that is if it if what yeah. is a life worth? Yeah, dude, you know, if, I, you, if 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 yeah. the alternative is this thing takes a part an apartment building out in the middle of the city. Valid, valid. You know, I mean, uh, all right. Moving on to the next one. Uh, this is a little bit different because this is the first time I've seen that, and that's this is alleged. So take it for what it's worth. But this was on Twitter. Are you googling what exo atmospheric means? Yeah. It means in space, Gonky, outside Look the atmosphere. That. So check this out. All right. Uh, this is uh, one of the the missile batteries. So this is like the... Look at that. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, dude. <laughs> what? What? Is that it impacting whatever? Yeah. Wow. Dude, that looks sci-fi, man. That it, uh, it very much looks sci-fi. That looks that looks that looks science fiction, man. That is wild. I mean, so what we've gotten again, it's great that no one was except for unfortunately, you know, the one little girl that was hit by shrapnel. But what we've seen is an impressive display of the Israeli defenses which is a little bit concerning because now we've seen an impressive display of Israeli defenses in real time. And so has everyone else, but yeah, holy crap to reach out to space. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy. Um, I wonder if it's the first time they used it, you know, I mean, I think it's the first time we've seen something like that. Yeah. I mean, I've never, I, I had to Google it, <laughs> you know, like what um, the heck is, what what is exo atmospheric <clears throat> so i mean you could intercept you can intercept airplanes with that that's yeah so i mean the thing is it's it's been and there's another video of a, a sar a sar 6 but we'll skip that one but the fact that the ballistic missile capability of iran is is that is the ability to go out that high and get back over dude that that is a lot harder to shoot down i mean now you're your ranges and you know the yep. target size and all that stuff i mean to be able to intercept that with something ground-based is pretty incredible yeah you know you're i mean they did test the gauntlet of their intercept capabilities right low and slow high and fast um 100 which i really didn't think much about that but that you know that it, it is a measure of their 
ability to defend themselves. But then you ask yourself, I, I mean, I have no idea, well, you know, how, how, how many of these defense weapons do they have? You know, like how much ammo? I mean, I imagine they probably have a lot, but, um, it's not, I mean, it, you still have to produce it. I mean, they're a country in conflict. So, I mean, they're, they're constantly now granted, it's usually the smaller drones, um, you know, the, the Houthis with their little cruise missiles, you know, they're not as advanced as what the Iranians launched. Yeah. Uh, I thought there were some reports. The Iranians told their own people that they shot hypersonic missiles. That's not the case. I don't think there's been any reports of actual hypersonic missiles going into this area, but if we compare this to what we've seen in Ukraine, it's a real threat. I mean, MiG 31s launching hypersonic cruise missiles. We've talked about this on this channel before. You know, now you're talking in space or just outside the atmosphere at high altitudes. I know somebody's going to correct that, but exo atmospheric, dude, that like the, the trig gets infinitely more challenging as you go. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the other thing to think about is, you know, I, my own perception, it, it may be wrong, <clears throat> is that, you know, it was a telegraphed uh, attack. So I would hope that the air defense system would be very successful. Now, you know, how, how does it react with a surprise attack? I don't know. You know, because I, you know, if I think if Iran really wanted to do some damage, they could have. But then, you know, it's like, well, then we're going to get the wrath of Israel most likely, which do we want that? Right. So I don't, you know. Yeah. Um, and you bring up a good point. You know, if, if it's this telegraphed, I mean, what of the 300 projectiles that they sent towards Israel, what is their capability now? Because, right. you know, one U.S. official said, oh, well, you know, it's depleted. Never underestimate your enemy. First off, you know, don't yeah. you, you, don't don't <laughs> yes. ever think, well, you know, now they can't do that again because they're getting billions of dollars somewhere. You know, I mean, they're yeah. they're getting money funneled in. Um, I. It's it's just to me, it's very interesting that the tech we've seen from, you know, this country uh, on both sides. I mean, you kind of expect it from Israel, but the fact that the Iranians are, are shooting, they have a very good ballistic missile program. I mean, they have, and what happens when it's nuclear tipped? Yeah. I mean, like you said, they have help <clears throat> and, you know, to be completely honest, obviously Israel has help too. So yeah. it's, I, I mean, yeah, you just, man, I've said it in the past, you just hope cooler heads prevail and, you know, you don't want, I mean, man, what, you know, killing people is the last, is the last thing you want to do. I mean, you know, we love flying fighter jets. They're deadly mean machines, but like at the end of the day, like you always hope you never have to do the job it was designed to do because then, yeah. you know, you, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're ruining lives, right? Which I don't know. All right. Uh, let's move on while you get your, uh, your topic ready. We've got some, chats from the audience uh marshall says hi guys love the pod thanks marshall i went to an air show this weekend and noticed that the blue angels landed with a 16 knot tailwind what's the rhino's tailwind limit donkey that's a you question i thought it was 10 <laughs> <laughs> what's the blue angel tailwind limit well dude if you've got a so if you've got uh, a resting gear in the hook be whatever it's whatever your heart desires. I land at 50, 50 knots tailwind. It's going to be a wild one, but it'll make it. It'll do it. On a treadmill? <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Even on a treadmill, man. So, uh, yeah. That's where it matters. Uh, Garrett says, you should watch the Danish Navy drone intercept. Google that Danish. Yeah. Drone intercept. We don't have a Danish. Uh, like the Danish, like helping the Iranians or just like a generic. I wonder. This says the Danish frigate suffered weapon system failure in the Red Sea. Huh? It's Danish frigate Ivor Hootfield. Did the Danish down help? Four Houthi drones. All right. Well, we can't do that. Uh, we don't have the tech to do this right now. Um, we don't Thomas, have Doug. <laughs> Thomas says. Uh, for Luna's Scooby Snack Fun mental health moment, have either of you had a toxic boss? Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Mover, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> calm down. Dude. Jesus. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, um, yeah, take five. 
<laughs> yeah, we have uh, the um, <laughs> I've had the most toxic of bosses. Oh, man. The duo, the trio, the oh, triad. Yeah. Where's Luna? It was, it was a Luna triad. Needs to start licking you, dude, like <laughs> sniffing your so face or something. <laughs> That's what's going to make her show up. She's going to be like, I smell sadness. sadness. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes. 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 We, we actually had the same toxic boss. Yeah. It wasn't good. Uh, DC says, this escalation has even me on edge. Mental health minute. How does this affect you? Increasing your stress level? I'll, I'll answer for Gonky. He's a golden retriever. He lives in the moment. <laughs> no. No, I'm uh because I'm older and I'm not on the tip yeah. anymore. I just I worry about my kids, man. Like I, you know, it's we live in an age where, uh, you know, we can wipe out the entire planet <laughs> in one little, and that's you know that's always in the back of my mind. I want I want a better world for my kids, and I like when I see stuff like this happening, I, you know, it kind of it always makes you wonder. You know, I worry that the books that I've written will come true. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and then people will be like, well, you just, uh, you didn't have any, you know, he's not creative. He just like, <laughs> yeah, but look at the date. I yeah. wrote it before it happened. The Helios conspiracy. I didn't know anything about AI until, you know, okay. It's pathetic. <laughs> yeah. I'll stir dumb ass. Mm. Gawky. Yes. Oh, we ready. Hold on. Serbia to let's buy. See if I can, let's see if I can do this. Holy moly. No, Doug. Can everybody see this good looking jet? Oh my gosh. I, we can now that I've added it to the show. Look at Did that. You? That is a good looking airplane. Even though it's a two seater, man, I would. I did, but the, it, you know, with the canards, it, it really helps. I, if I was Serbia, like this picture would probably sell it right here. I mean, <laughs> how much are they can we afford them <laughs> off our i'm gonna guess no uh but serbia to procure 12 rafal fighter jets from france so the government's announced plans to procure 12 fighters from france as tensions in the balkan regions continue to rise so um it's kind of a short article but it just talks about uh the signing of the contract and be expected in approximately two months with the presence of the president of france uh it is kind of a you know they've primarily had russian stuff so you know it's a i guess it's a departure from what they've uh normally been doing you know it's 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 huge for france right so i mean uh the rafale is uh a pretty awesome airplane the indians are using it and now you know they're gonna have another customer so it's a dual engine aircraft state-of-the-art avionics weapons payload to support various missions. So it is multi-role, including ground and sea attack, reconnaissance, and nuclear strike deterrence. Potential sale of 12 uh, Rafals is estimated to cost around 3 billion. There you go, Mover. So what's, what is 3 billion euros divided by 12? I can't Wait, I have to do math? I was just sitting here <clears throat> looking pretty. It's a lot, dude. <laughs> yeah. And here it is. A shift away from Russia. Once the deal is closed, the sale would mark a significant shift from uh, their traditional supplier of Russia. So they remain uh, reliant on Soviet design aircraft, MiG 29s, and my 35 helicopters, and also some Chinese stuff. So some tensions with Kosovo. Serbia is one of the largest militaries in the Balkan region. It's ramped up its defense spending to keep pace with their arch foe, Kosovo, which was recently cleared to buy Javelin anti tank missiles from the US. Uh, yeah, frequent clashes have broken out between them, and they are hoping the Rafal will help them in their quest. Um, to stand up to the to Kosovo. So, I mean, I don't know, Mover. What do you think, man? Good, good, good idea, bad idea? Well, so we talked about um, Azerbaijan recently doing the exact same thing. Well, not the same thing. They were, it's the pivot away from Russian equipment. And part of that is because Russia is entrenched in war and they need to produce what they can produce to maintain that effort the other piece to that too is what's available um and technologically advanced anytime you change i think you've talked about this with malaysia right where when you when you kind of change hardware uh, especially with what the russians give you i mean the russians kind of give you okay here you go it's not necessarily what they have so you may be on your own for some of the avionics and stuff versus 
Western, yep. typically, we may give you something watered down, but it's still going to, you know, be the 99% solution. So it's kind of turnkey. And the Rafale is a great aircraft, you know, 9G fighter, good radius, good rate good avionics i it didn't i don't see what missiles kind of came with it and that's kind of a question was it good looking M good looking missiles <laughs> but so that i mean that would be my question is you know because it's not just that it's it's what's the what's the support look like what how do we train our maintainers how do we build the missiles and the bombs because i mean it's great to fly air shows but you still need all the stuff to make people go away yeah. and if you don't have that stuff then great I didn't see what the timeline was as far as delivery schedules, you know, and, well, and how the, new these these jets are. It's going to be a couple of years. I mean, the deal is pretty much done, not officially stamped, checks cleared kind of thing, but um, yeah. But yeah, I <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, did you you hit the nail on the head? I mean, the uh uh you know, the Malaysians told me like, dude, if we buy Super Hornet F16s, like when they bought the Hawk, they're like when the, those airplanes flew from the factory and landed in our country, we could put gas in them, put weapons on them, and go do a mission. He said when the MiG, they told me the the MiG-29, the flanker, if <clears throat> the Indians really helped them with the MiG-29, yeah. and the French actually really helped them with uh, a lot of avionics stuff with the Su-30. So, like you said, the at least the Western equipment, you know, the brochure is more accurate, I think, when you're shopping fighters in the West than you are with... Uh, with Russia, but it is eye opening, right? Because the general location, I mean, I, you know, they've been using Russian stuff for a while, and there is a mentality, a huge mentality shift between uh, uh, Russian uh, tactics and, and fighters that are built for those tactics and Western stuff, too. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I, I'm I love the Rafal, I think it's a good looking jet. And uh, if I was a Serbian fighter pilot, I'd be like, I'd be excited. <laughs> I mean, so. Here we are, you know, 1999, 98, 99. T Bear was in this. He was fighting in the Kosovo, or you know, yeah. he was there in Kosovo. Yeah. And now we're talking Western equipment. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Serbian Air Force will have now. It's I mean, it's not F 16s, which would be the total full circle, right? But having Western fighters and moving away from kind of the Russian footprint is very interesting, given the history of that region. Um, and it, it's, it's how many times have we, you know, cause you start to pick up a trend on the show. How many times have we talked about this now? This has been like a trend item of the, all these new aircraft orders. And it's like, eh, well, we're kind of getting away from the, the Russian yeah. stuff and, um, yeah, the world. I will say this, the, <clears throat> I actually met the, uh, I think the French do a really good job of marketing. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually met and talked with the uh, Rafal sales guy there when oh, I was cool. in Malaysia. And he was an ex-Malaysian fighter pilot they hired to sell them, right? So uh, they were very smart about it. And I remember, um, you know, when I ever worked for Boeing, Boeing's like, listen, we're, we're handcuffed by the yeah. rules and regulations here in the States. And we can't. You know, we can't grease the skids any more than, than we're allowed to. So Not the French. No, wink, wink, not, not. So they are much better at, you know, marketing. Uh, and also I believe the whole idea of if you buy this airplane from us, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll share some, some tech, you know, we'll build part of it in your country. Right. So we'll help enhance your, your, yeah. uh, aviation, avi aviation industry. So. I don't know. Are they going to build part of it in Serbia? I, I no, but I, I, I know oh, you mean other, other places. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Cool. Cause I mean, who, who wants to buy, I mean, ideally you are self-sufficient in your own military and your own fighter, right? So if you have some domestic capability to create, maintain parts, right? That's always a big plus too. When you're thinking logistically, uh, you know, we're going to buy these fighters and I, I, it's a lot of money, right? So yeah. Yeah. In well, a long period of time too, probably. Well, and here's the other piece to that. Cause we're going to talk about tensions in another country later, but okay. Israel, Iran, Serbia, Kosovo, Ukraine, Russia, like the world is not doing so great right now. There's a lot of tensions and a lot of borders. Like things are ramping up across the board. That's yeah, it feels good. like people are putting the du putting their dukes up. <laughs> I, it it <laughs> feels like, like we're huh? just, well, I mean, okay. 
Serbia, Kosovo, right? 1998, 99. So it's just, we're just doing reruns. We just keep going. We're doing the same conflicts. Yeah, it's almost like I've seen a lot of this before. Yeah. Uh, and we hate it because, you know, uh, even though we trained for war, you still, that's the last resort. You know, you don't yep. want, you want 100%. something else. Anyway. Uh, oh, oh, so on this topic, though, before we keep move on, Randolph says, interesting that Serbia didn't go with China and get the J-10 or JF-17, especially since JF-17 has some commonality with the fulcrum they once flew. And that is a good point. Because when we were talking about the other shift from the previous Russian equipment, the JF-17 was one of them. Well, the JF-17 was a valid option um, as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that they didn't do that, but it could be another manufacturing thing. What was available? Who was, like you said, who was selling the hardest? I think the Rafal is uh, much more capable airplane. In the JF seventeen, way better looking. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but I mean, I, yeah, I'm thinking it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, my inner Frenchman. <laughs> All right, moving on to jets. We're gonna talk about another jet that's near and dear to we we that we've talked about on this show before, and that is the Eurofighter Typhoon. Yeah. Europe knows how to make some good looking airplanes, man. Yeah. <laughs> man. I feel like there's not a whole lot of different ways you can make them but these days all right so in march of 2024 because we just talked about the typhoon and the raf being involved in the israeli uh iranian drone slash cruise missile shoot down so the brits were involved in that but this article is talking about in march of 24 uh six raf eurofighter typhoons were deployed to romania's i can't <laughs> <laughs> Doug, yeah. Doug, Mikhail, Doug, Lucio, dude, Air Base for NATO's enhanced air policing mission, marking 30 years since the Typhoon's first flight. Uh, so basically, developed by Germany, Italy, Spain, these multi-role combat aircraft will undertake air policing missions alongside the Romanian Air Force until August of 2024. It's the fifth. It's the RS fifth in Romania since 2014 underscores NATO's commitment to securing its airspace in response to security challenges, particularly following Russia's annexation of Crimea showcases the enduring frontline capability. So that's pretty much what this is about is that, you know, the, the typhoon has now stepped up a lot and the RAF is going to it's their quick reaction alert or quick reaction forces for, um, basically patrols to kind of flex NATO's muscle against Russia and their continued possible aggression, you know, to kind of keep them at bay and keep them where they are. And they're basically saying uh, it helps keep Euros, uh, Europe's skies secure. I pay tribute to dedicated personnel delivering this important mission, says the UK Defense Secretary uh, Grant. I just lost it. Grant Shapps. Ready to launch at a moment's notice for the next four months. They will be respond with professionalism to threats and incidents in support of our collective security. Uh, and then you can see some stuff about the uh, Eurofighter. Obviously, it's an awesome aircraft, Gonky. You've talked about it on your channel. We've talked about it here before uh, as far as, you know, how good it is. I mean, do they consider, is it Gen 4.5? Is it kind of that kind of in between? Because it's a, it's a, pretty advanced i mean everybody i've yeah. talked to that's fought them has been like dude it's 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 pretty good yeah um it's interesting though that they're not using the f i guess they're still the f-35 is not what they want to use for this mission yet uh because you think when you know you're talking you know nato security we poland has gotten the f-35 and you know they obviously still got the f-16 and we've talked about their upgrades to the F-16 and stuff, and, and Greek is, is moving on to the F-35. But it's interesting that they're still, that this aircraft, the Typhoon, is still being used uh, for these NATO missions and even used two days ago in Israel uh, for that as well. In fact, I would not be surprised based on the date of this article. It could be very similar, you know, different squadrons um, you know, from these groups that are going down and, and forward deploying uh, to shoot down the the um, the drones and stuff, but what do you think? I mean, what do you think for you know the typhoon in Europe? Well, you know, you talk about them using it, you know, in this 
like they just shot down right uh they helped shoot down a lot of these iranian drones i mean i, I was trying to look it up here but you know the, the a lot of your fourth so you know the whole fifth gen thing stealth right that that means you got to carry stuff internal and i just think mover that maybe part of the issue is i mean we talked about it right how many f-35s would it take to shoot down 70 drones how many strike eagles would it take to shoot down 70 drones right so i think the typhoon probably for a lot of the other missions minus stealth might be a better platform because it can carry a lot more weapons probably a since it's been around for a lot longer it's probably authorized and cleared and the tactics have been established for a entire spread of weapons so if they need a an airplane now it's like typhoon is ready that's a good point you know jsf might on paper be better but we haven't doped that out yet right we haven't tested it and then you know like i said it's as, as soon as you put pylons on fat amy you might as well launch an f-35 right uh, you mean a typhoon that's what i meant yes sorry yeah uh yeah you know uh i've that's seen a lot of the navy versions yeah. of the f-35 flying around with you know pilots just stuff hanging on the wings i'm like you might as well be driving around in a super hornet you know so um and that's a generalization i, I get it mm -hmm. but uh, my, my point is maybe the typhoon is the aircraft that's ready now and that's why it's it's uh it's kind of the star of the show at least for them and i would say much like the super hornet i don't think f-35 a lot of a lot of the countries that have uh, some mixed fleets i don't think f-35 is going to completely replace right it'll complement so well i think you make a good point too and we've talked about this previously of why the f-35 may have not been used by nato partners in the israeli uh conflict and that is you know opsec you're not you don't want to telegraph what its capabilities are you don't want to put it in a foreign country right uh you know you, you don't want to forward deploy it when you're not ready for it and and you you send your workhorse you know that's why we're sending f-16s and f-15es in the middle east to do this, some of this stuff because that's not what it's called for now and you don't need stealth you know we're not right. day one through you know 6.9 of the war we are in the hey we're just doing a show of presence show of force and that involves a really highly capable fighter that if somebody trundles across the border we need to deal with it and they need to know we're there. We're not necessarily using any of the stealth piece or anything like that. So it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I listened to a, uh, air crew interview. He does a lot of good interviews with guys who've flown the typhoon and I can't remember who, but I, I listened to one of them the other day and it was, uh, kind of when they first brought in the typhoon, he talked about how they developed its, uh, air to air, uh, game and it's air to ground and he was a jaguar guy right he was an air to ground guy but it was pretty interesting and obviously i mean he 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 basically uh you know confirmed to me that it is an extremely capable airplane and we we flew with him a little bit uh in malaysia as well so and i i got to you know i got to talk to the british pilots and stuff and hang out with them and it's i mean it's a i mean it, it's a good airplane i mean it's it's definitely good looking now you know me i like a good looking airplane Joe says, hi, guys. Good point about the F-35's weapon load. I wonder if it also be OPSEC not revealing its capabilities. That's what we were just saying. Yeah. Um, Thanks, for Joe. sure. I think that's a definite thing. All right. Moving on. Uh, before we get to your IMAX Blue Angels, Rob says, Mover, get on Gonky. <laughs> Was at the Sun and Fun in Florida this Saturday, and the Navy photo bombed the new Air Force recruits getting sworn in. I will not be getting on Gonky. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know what the rest of this is talking. What do you mean photobomb? Did the Blue Angels like fly over them as they were getting sworn Probably. in? Because that's cool. Probably. Well, that's a good segue if it's the Blue Angles. Blue Angles. Yeah. Yeah. No. So this is the. Uh, what we. Uh, so You're makes, make me watch this. I, it makes me sad. You haven't seen it yet. Uh -uh. <clears throat> okay. So I've last been avoiding week, it because I don't want to be sad. I know, and it, I watched it. and It made me sad. Um, <laughs> and yet here we are literally i could be anyways um but mace you know last week we had her on and i think she's the one that brought it up right the imax thing and I, so it was I, no it was a uh chat somebody brought it up and then we talked about you know if the thunderbirds had something like that and oh, she said yeah it would have been cool to have an imax camera with her yeah so i i 
this is good, man. So I want to get your reaction uh, after you, I, you watch it. I've not seen it. I have not seen it. Because yeah. I've watched it a couple times. And uh, oh, other than a few cringy, slightly cringy moments, it's exceptional. So go ahead, man. Okay. All right. Can I play? Are we ready? <laughs> Here we go. It's rated G. I didn't think things were still rated G. The blues are. Now I'm sad. Engage. Yeah. Engage the sadness. <laughs> <laughs> uh what do you think man sadness, what stood out sadness on ready now uh, <laughs> i'm reminded i almost did a maybe i did i don't remember there was so much going on during the pandemic back in 2020 they took a camera into a blue angels demo i think i asked mace about this in our interview they did a uh like they they sat there with them as they did the brief yeah i remember this it's so creepy they go through the whole calm, the whole they flight. go through the whole thing yeah. and they're like like chair flying and closing their eyes and it's 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 just different. It's a whole different community, it's a different atmosphere, and get it. I get it. That's what they do, that's their thing, you know. That's that's whatever works for them. More power to them. I'm not a blue angel. But um, dude, that looks awesome. Yeah, yeah the just the, the cinematography of yeah. that is incredible. The uh, the dual high alpha pass to me, I'm like, man, how did they? Yeah, I, you know, Glenn Powell. Uh, it, I, you know, what else is cool? It, I think it's cool. Glenn Powell, I think, will be the next Tom Cruise in the sense that he caught the bug from Top Gun Maverick, and um, what was the other movie he made? uh with the world oh, War II, uh, the uh, devotion devotion great devotion. movie by the way yeah what a great have you seen that yeah yeah oh, i read dude, the it's book great. it's a great <laughs> it's, it's awesome. a great movie he's just got he's got the bug you know he's he's got the aviation thing and i think it's cool when you know these these a-listers pick up the aviation bug and then want to make stuff yeah. like this <clears throat> so yeah. i encourage it i think it's awesome because we need more stuff like that you know 100%. we need we need more of this. It just makes me sad. And I don't like watching things that make me sad. Yeah, I, I can't wait till it comes out. I'll I'll probably bring a box of uh, tissues and I'll go watch. For what? From being sad. I'm sure. No, I'm sure the right. actual. I'm sure right. this is just the, the teaser, right? So I'm sure the actual final. It's going to be eye watering, dude. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. I'm, I'm glad you showed it to me, but I'm not going to watch it again. <laughs> we're gonna go watch the, we're gonna go watch it in theaters man <laughs> uh i don't know man i still we haven't seen ghostbusters to... i haven't seen doom 2 what else have i not seen there's all kind of i haven't seen the nascar thing on netflix i don't even have netflix anymore they're gonna tell you what i have been, in comparison tell you what i have been watching is fallout have you seen that no walton goggins it's really? amazing Any yeah game? yeah well you you won't know anything because it's a video game thing i've never played the video game but anyway uh, yeah, IMAX Blue Angels. Check yeah. it out. Really good. Really pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, uh, nice of Tom Cruise to let those Blue Angle people ride in his jets and experience what he does every day, says Randolph. <clears throat> yeah, my it's funny. So my uh, my first skipper was a Tomcat guy, and he told me that uh, when they were filming Top Gun, Tom Cruise was in the O Club, and a couple Tomcat guys walked up to him and said, "How about an autograph, Tom?" <clears throat> he said, "Sure." And so they signed, uh, they signed the napkin in front of him and walked out. <laughs> I was like, "Dude, <laughs> I don't know." That comment made me think of that story, which I thought was funny. That's awesome. <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, Blake says it's going to come to Prime after IMAX. That's when I'll watch it in my living Dude. room. You should make the trek down to Pensacola. We'll watch it in the. I'm sure they'll play in the aviation museum. Can Luna come? Probably. We could go sit in Tomcats. They have the Tomcats. The, Tomcats. Uh, yeah. All right. So moving on to our next topic that we'd like to talk about today. We've talked about this a little bit, right? We've talked about drones, and um, you know, there's there's now a, a new school of thought, which is like drone what after. 300 projectiles of various natures drones um 
cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, whatever, just got shot down in Israel. I say don't get too cocky because we have still seen drone warfare uh, in its infancy, and we've seen it used to great success in Ukraine and Israel in, to some degree. And now this article comes out from Business Insider, and it says China is reportedly, this was sent to me by a viewer, and it's got some people a little worked up, even though the thing says, uh, an analyst says the drones aren't necessarily a game changer. It might be. China is reportedly developing military drones that can split into six to overwhelm enemy defenses. So take your 300 drones and now multiply that by six. Can you do that math in public, Aki? <laughs> I was thinking of a single group heavy that all of a sudden maneuvers. I'm <laughs> exactly. sorry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So Chinese researchers have unveiled a military drone capable of splitting into six units in mid air dude that is it's like thundercats yeah <laughs> um the drone marks a breakthrough in air separation technology and could change the battlefield the new devices are faster and more efficient than traditional multi-rotor drones and have the ability to throw off opponents by unexpectedly multiplying into huge drone swarms on the battlefield see that is the problem it's the swarms it's not the onesie twosies that you know you have five hours of notice it's the swarms that overwhelm your defenses and go back to Gonkey's prevailing argument of what happens when one gets through. Inspired by the structure of maple seeds, they have just one blade, both when combined and divided. They can fly around freely like a standard drone and communicate to carry out complex missions. Despite their unusual shape, they boast a flight efficiency nearly twice that of a similar size multi-rotor drone. Scientists said in a peer review paper published in Acta Aeronautica and Astronautica, Seneca journal if traditional drones were combined they would typically slow down but when separating single units these drones fly efficiency flight efficiency remains 40 percent higher than most small drones so this is what i guess the plant that it's based off of it's the ability to confuse responsive air defense systems like just like you said single group hostile heavy <clears throat> maneuver six group wall <laughs> eight group gorilla right uh, right if the group was ready to be filled and a conflict blew out today, it could be a tactical game changer. China's technology development process can be a black box at times, but I would not assume the announcement of this breakthrough means China will be filling these things anytime soon. I would never underestimate our enemy. Uh, and then they go on to talk about the Ukraine conflict and what we've seen there and that they're much higher end. Remember, even the Houthis, I mean, some of their drones in Yemen are just little sticks with, with engines on it and then like a payload. So it doesn't take much, but these small, affordable drones are reshaping the batter battlefield. Um, of course, we spent two point four billion because that's what we do, and um, four hundred million for counter drone tech, which is a smart thing. The PLA's buildup is on a scale not seen since World War II. Land, sea, air, space, cyber, information do domains. And if you remember, I'm not saying this is related, but if you recall, we were just talking about drone swarms at Langley and they were trying to figure out where that would come from. So it's a real threat. It's, it's really something that, that we worry about, not only at home, because imagine, you know, uh, the ability of a drone to break up and suddenly it's six of them and, you know, you're only shooting, you're trying to shoot down one and next thing you know, you got multiple contacts, but also it's just the further development and advancement of i think what's changing the battlescape with these drones i mean imagine because portability right i mean what we've seen in ukraine is it's a backpack they launch it and then they go and either drop a grenade in a tank or it becomes what they call suicide drone where it you know it actually flies into the target and if imagine a kid that's got one of these in his backpack and next thing he's you know now it's not one, it's six of them, you know, or eight of them or, or nine of them or whatever. So, I mean, Gonky, what do you think, man? Uh, I mean, dude, we're in the infant infancy of drone warfare. I just, it's the, the possibilities are like, just like start digging through your sci-fi, your favorite sci-fi movies, you know? I mean, I, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know, man. Like you said, I mean, like take take a, you know, take a sea whiz, right? So you know, if something gets past, you know, your 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 fighters and your your 
sea sparrow or whatever and it's the phalanx man that and then that thing goes from one to six i mean one's gonna get through and let's say a couple get through right now then you know you're it's it's um it's truly you know in this particular this particular uh yeah article it's truly uh, uh force multiplier overwhelm them with numbers and and uh it's scary man i i don't <laughs> well do and, that? and to a lesser extent we've talked about this with other countries not with drones but with like old jets like mig 15s mig 17 like 100%. you know these countries that you know and we were always worried about well what happens when we run out of missiles well exactly now you're you're running out of missiles because you're what you plan for multiplied times six and if right. it takes missiles to shoot them down like we just saw you know because how hard is it to gun something that can break up into six it's hard enough to <laughs> gun something in general yeah and odds are guess what when it breaks up into six it's going to be a lot smaller than it was right so it's even harder to hit so yeah, yeah i know yeah. there's a i mean yeah dude, there's a lot uh there's a lot to there's a lot to be afraid of uh when you're thinking about you know threat nations building that kind of stuff yeah and mj says are we sure this is not just some smart forward-thinking pr for when these things fall apart in midair we know china is noted for its wonderfully high quality build maybe yeah underestimate them at your own peril yeah I, yeah i if if i'm in a big chair in dc and i see something like this i'm going you know to the back farthest back part of the vault and saying what do we have to counter this because i'm taking it seriously i'm taking this seriously i'm taking okay let's think three more steps ahead and what else could be next because you don't want to fight the last war you want to fight what's next because you don't want to be caught yeah <clears throat> i mean you dude you hit the nail on the head you can't and I, I would say that, you know, we generally speak, generally the, the, at least in the U S I don't think we operate like that. I mean, there's been times where, yeah, you know, but yeah, I don't know, MJ, maybe, I mean, I, yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah. hopefully we never find out. <laughs> it's a scary time. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, Gonky brings up to your next point. Good segue. <laughs> yeah. Really good segue. So, uh, I started, you know, when I, when you know, I like talking Navy stuff, mainly because Hoover has no idea. But anyways, um, so I was just uh, looking through, you know. Are you sharing an article, by the way? Yeah, right now. Hold on. Okay. Let me see I if just, I can share I a screen. I don't see it. I'm not in your, uh, in your imagination right now. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Doug, help me. Uh, so, you know, up until, you know, recently, the United States has been this does not look like the article that you chose yeah because the other one dude it wouldn't uh f-35 b upgrades near completion aboard japanese warship the kaga man that's their that's the japanese aircraft carrier okay all right continue right. hold on my yes. yeah see proceed sir yeah this, anyways. Overruns in, yeah <laughs> no, no no dude i could i could i'm it's totally within my ability to screw this up but so i was looking at like you know hey uh, you know, the United States has been the, the carrier operator, right? We've got, you know, all these uh, Nimbus class carriers. We've got the Ford out there now. Uh, I think the Enterprise is almost done. Billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. And then uh, it looks like Japan here is building a carrier, the Kaga. I think they're making two of them. So they got the F-35B, right? So there's probably not going to be a catapult, but uh, they will have uh, the ability to fly fast jets off of flat tops and then uh let's see we should have a catapult that goes up <laughs> yeah it's called the f-35b um and then let's see there's you know in addition to building oh okay, the, I got you. in addition to building the next generation of super carriers right so the ford which I got to pull this $37 million um, or a billion dollars. They, uh, this is my old ship, the Stennis, which uh, kind of came online in the mid nineties and it's going through its midlife uh, overhaul and they're spending, you know, 65% complete. And it, you know, this takes years to do and a tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of money. 
uh, to do this stuff. You know, it's obviously it's a nuke boat. So, you know, we're, let me stop sharing this. Come back. So, you know, it, it got me thinking back when battleships kind of ruled, you know, the, the Navy and the seas, you know, when airplanes were first coming along, you know, it's like, Hey, these, you know, battleships can repel their, no, no big deal. Well, right. They proved that wrong. They <laughs> take one airplane, went out there, sunk the battleship. And then obviously world war II came along and that was when, uh, naval air power via aircraft carriers really, uh, came into its own with all this talk of drones. And like, you're talking about mover, like, you know, the, the, the ability to, uh, maneuver, the ability to uh, deceive, the, the ability to overwhelm. You know, when you're talking about extremely large, expensive weapons, which is what an aircraft carrier is, it's like, you know, the, yeah, I've got to ask the question. It's a valid question. Are they relevant in tomorrow's war? Or maybe a better question is how many uh, would be relevant? Um, you know, Japan's building them. China is building them. United States is building them. We're, you know, a lot of countries are spending billions of dollars, but, you know, we kind of, you know, with, with uh, what we've seen in the Ukraine with the Houthis, I would argue that the landscape of future war, especially when you combine AI with drone technology, I think is going to be a lot different. And, you know, people always like, you know, people who are like, typhoon haters they're like oh that that jet was built for a war that never happened right so uh you know meaning the cold war era so i don't know what do you think am i crazy i mean i i worked and operated around aircraft carriers i love naval aviation i i see the weakness in naval aviation um it's uh you know Five, what was it five ten? Oh gosh, almost ten years ago, right when the uh, the Chinese old diesel sub just like surfaced right next to I think it was the Kitty Hawk, and they were like, oh, <laughs> "What is that thing doing there?" You know. So, you know, when when they are primed and ready to fight, they're super hard to kill. But you know, they don't. You know, they're not always uh, in high alert, right? So I don't know. What do you think? Am I crazy? I mean, is the are we seeing the landscape change? I don't know. I mean. I you, you, projection of power is important and an aircraft carrier is that you know it's the piece through strength it's the you know there it's funny I, I saw the patch that the who's out there the enterprise right now no the uh, enterprise is being built uh the eisenhower right eisenhower I, right knew it started with me uh the they've got the drone wars patch because that's what they're doing they're shooting down houthi drones right now they weren't involved in the thing but I don't know. I mean, I, I, I see a world where, you know, I mean, as an Air Force guy, right, projection of power, we can do that with tankers and forward deployment. Like, that's been our, our thing. That's that's what we do. And even to some extent, you know, once you get established in a war and stuff like that, do, as long as there are seas, I don't see a, a time where you wouldn't need that because especially like the Pacific conflict, you know, you're you're gonna need that carrier out there. You're you're you 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 have to. You know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for air power? You know, until the until you get some level of established footprint, you're gonna need those carriers out there. And an aircraft carrier, and I can't believe I'm actually arguing in favor of this, but it it, it brings about a massive amount of firepower to the battle space, and it shapes foreign policy. I mean, how many times have we parked aircraft carriers off of coasts and said, FAFO, you know, F around and find out. And, and so while I agree that technology changes, but I think the technology changes on the carrier, you know, I, I think there's some very smart people on the Navy side that are developing counter drone stuff and new tactics and new ways to use naval aviation for that end, not to be obsolete. So I, I just, I don't, I don't see it now. And eventually when we go to space, <laughs> that's the footprint we're going to take. We're going to take the aircraft carrier footprint in space. Like that is, that is the, that's the next, the final frontier. So yeah, but, yeah, I, I, I agree with you on a lot of that. I just, uh, you know, every once in a while, right? Like, a 
like a technology comes along that just like just redefines everything. Like, yeah, and I think it will. I mean, I, I think you're always going to have an escalation of technology, but every time a new technology comes out, typically somebody has an answer for it, or you hope. Now, yeah, it may be costly, but eventually, assuming the right people are put in place to do it, you know, there, there are smart people that are out there working. You hope. I mean, otherwise, yeah, we just lost. What's a carrier cost these days? Uh, let's see, 30, 37 billion. Is that what I saw? Yeah. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. Sorry. Way over budget. <clears throat> Unit cost 12.9 billion. Dude, that's crazy. That's what the Ford uh, cost in uh, 2018 dollars. So we've had a little inflation since then. So maybe a little more. Uh, yeah. 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 I, I mean, yeah, they're expensive. I mean, yeah, they're amazing. They're, they're amazing extremely powerful but I, I always you know just i think it's a valid question to ask and i i'm i'm certain that that like you're like you're alluding to there's probably 50 pound heads working on it right now like to make sure well it's more than just that though if wombat were here he would let us know but <laughs> like you're you're a japanese carrier where's your e2 right you know yeah. where where's some of the other support stuff i mean we're not we're not in a vacuum you know, we're not just Super Hornets and Fat Amy's. You know, we have special operations. Oh, oh, Luna has. She's a little late. Uh, she's early. <clears throat> oh, she is. Yeah. Zing. Uh, <laughs> so myth busted. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. He's going to have to edit this part out. <laughs> he left it in the last couple times, but we'll have to tell it's him. It's okay. Him. Dude, it makes the show authentic, right? Yeah. Uh, well, the clips, it doesn't, doesn't thing. But this, uh, yeah, so this this proves, right? Because she didn't show up with Mace. And now here she is. Yeah. My theory is that when Mover gets around any woman, he emits pheromones. And <laughs> Luna can pick that up. So... <laughs> sex panther 60 percent of the time it works every time it's certainly not talking about aircraft carriers that gets mover excited so <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny she's like yeah. look it's in her contract there can be one princess per episode and yeah. she can't she can't share yeah she doesn't share spotlight that's it but anyway to your point Going back to our topic, um, I think it will still be relevant, at least in the near future, until proven otherwise. I think you have to prove it irrelevant before you can make that assessment. Yeah, I hope we never find out, because that'd be a bad, bad, bad day. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hidden Force says, why did you know Luna yawn when Mover said me? <laughs> <laughs> Luna. That's funny. Do you, do you do you have something you want to tell, tell everybody? Dude, she's dude, that's the stink eye right there. For that's sure. Sleepy. She's sleepy. She's tired. She's ready for bed. It's only 820, girl. You're early. She's got a big day tomorrow. She's going to daycare because I gotta go shoot. <laughs> oh, no. gotta, <laughs> uh, YouTube, YouTube's like, what 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 word was that, Mover? Yeah. <laughs> I have to range qualify. There you go. There that's you mine. go. <laughs> um thing okay we got some questions from the audience um let's see if i can do this without douglas uh jackson says five dollars is five dollars thanks jackson mj says i was joking drones are in the top five of threats facing us we need viable non-ballistic area denial weapons you know what we take every joke seriously around here uh <laughs> We weren't taking it seriously, though. Um, thanks, Mark man. says, thanks, Mark. Thanks, thanks y'all. Last week's Mental Health Minute hit the spot. Gunky, what is the Mental Health Minute this week? Uh, you figure that out. Uh, Luna, help uh, us out. Yeah. <laughs> Luna says, Mental Health Minute is bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Why sleep is important. Kate says, thank Kate you for thanks. the Angels clip. Does our hearts good. Pure love of aviation. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's good. It's good airplane pictures. Diego with a puppy Diego, dog super chat for message sending below. What does that mean? Nice. I don't know, but thank message. you. 
That looks yeah, like we don't, uh, have, we don't have Doug to tell us. It looks, looks like, like Pensacola Beach is right there. Maybe Destin. Yeah. It's not green enough. Joe says, <laughs> I bet Margot Robbie on a carrier would work for Mover. I was w reminded that she's a married woman. So, oh, yeah, that's bad. Just so you're aware, not a home wrecker. JP <laughs> says, Good evening, guys. Thanks, JP. Yeah, let's see if I can find uh some random ones here luna best be on next sunday to help with the dog goes oh hammy we're gonna be doing that thing um the canines for warriors it's the uh, dcs tournament sunday 21st. evening yeah sunday evening uh gonky is suggesting movers like the human equivalent of pepe le pew i'm gonna have to google that <laughs> um Oh, that's a good one. What to do when you have no idea what to do. It's very uh, <laughs> self-aware. <laughs> sounds like sounds like what was going through my mind at, at every commit. <laughs> says, that's Pensacola. It is Pensacola. Gonkies right outside your window. <clears throat> yeah. I couldn't hey. tell you what I wanted to super chat. <laughs> oh, uh, that's awesome. I recognize the sand. I mean, come on. Zena says carriers are necessary for terrifying airmen and showing off to other countries. True statement. Uh, read the message I wrote below the super chat, please. Oh my god, you're gonna make me scroll. Where even is the super chat? God, you keep them entertained while I search for this. Uh, well, here Luna. Is, here it is. <laughs> Diego says DCS VF 31. Nope, okay. Dingo Studis Studis Stud Eyes is the channel. Dog channel. Uh, maybe it's not below, maybe it's above. I don't know. We, we don't work. have. We need Doug. Yeah. We need Doug for this. He's the one. Just, Doug just say it again. The, yeah. Say it again. Doug say it manages again. the chat. Just say it again. Say whatever you want to say. Um, goodness, the tournament. I've only flown the F four for testing. Better get current. The F four. You can do that. Oh, movie. That's mover. What do you think of Fallout? I like it. And Ella Purnell. <laughs> she married. She's got a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I just I have to ask, man. She, but she, she's a, a fine actress, is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I like Walton Goggins. He was in Justified. And anything he's in, she's usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty good in this. Shanghai says, uh, I'll be joining a trash talk. Oh, Shanghai will be there. The head cool. then. Yeah. Yeah. What? Nice. Uh, and then that is it uh let's see because of the pheromones <laughs> do that you know i'm not smart enough to think of that on my own i just thought of transformers you know in that scene when yeah <laughs> what is she doing she's taking a nap she's like i'm done all right let's get back to the show huh how about that can we do sure. that can i do that can i oh we got something uh, Chris says, I was watching one of the old helicopter videos. What does the little saying Lester says about three WCs and top of T's mean? Well, that's a blast from the past. Three G's. So uh, three things in the green, right? I think it was like your oil pressure, oil temperature, and your CHT, your cylinder head temperature. So all those things were in the green. Uh, your top of T's, which that's a turbine thing. It just meant that your uh, rotor and your engine RPM were both in the green, the needles. And then no warnings and no caution, no WCs. Fuel's good about an hour. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> how long you have fuel remaining. Uh, and then clear, clear, clear is you clear. <laughs> is the Iranian army going to get slapped again, says Siba. We're going to find out. I doubt it. I hope not. I, I mean, not that I hope that the Iranian army doesn't get slapped. I, I hope we don't devolve into World War III. Like, can't we all just get along? I know. I'm saying. Right? Okay. Gonky? Yes, sir. I say that, and then we're going to cover tensions on the Thai-Myanmar border. Thailand's F-16s check MiG-29 jets conducting airstrikes near the border. Did you know about this? uh no uh okay. i did not continue well this happened uh in response to escalating tension where is there no escalating tension i ask along the thai myanmar border 
the Royal Thai Air Force, RTAF, has taken proactive measures by dispatching two F-16 fighter jets to patrol the airspace above Tak May Sot district. I'm probably butchering that, huh? Probably. Uh, they come in the wake of reports of the Russian-built MiG-29 fighter jets operated by the Myanmar military conducting airstrikes close to the border. They announced via a Facebook post on April 10th, citing the need to monitor the situation, particularly in the vicinity of Mayawadi Township. Probably not saying that right either, where the recent conflict between Myanmar military and Kar Karen? Rebel forces have intensified. The MiG-29 is reportedly engaged in airstrikes against the Karen rebel forces in this township, located approximately five kilometers from the Mesot uh, border checkpoint. The explosion resulted from these strikes were audible on the Thai side. They don't like that. Uh, they took off and they will conduct patrols. So it's a kind of an ongoing thing. They will ensure the safety of the residents. Through the, despite the heightened tension, the RTAF clarified the MiG-29s have not been reported to have violated the Thai airspace. So this is very similar to what we talked about with Poland taking off um, in preparation in case anything came over from Russia to Ukraine. And uh, so this underscores the ongoing conflict, which has been uh, going on since the coup in February 2021. They, uh, the Myanmar Air Force frequently deploys combat aircraft to provide close air support to its ground forces. Nonetheless, it echoes an incident in 2022 when their MiG-29 intruded in the Thai airspace, causing panic among the villagers, prompting the F-16s to dispatch along the border. Uh, they lost a key town. So it's not going great for Myanmar. Uh, but their fighting continues. There's uh, ethnic insurgents captured a crucial trading town in the Myanmar-China border and uh, things remain tense. So this looks like it's more of a, a spillage, if you will, uh, than direct conflict, but it does underscore kind of things are, I mean, deep, things are happening all around the world. And um, I mean, what do you think, dude? What do you, what's your take on, on this? Um. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it seems it seems that way, doesn't it? Uh, I think that it didn't. It's uh, so in this case, the MiG 29s did not come into the airspace, right? Right. They were just right. kind of ready. But, but they just so you're the aware. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, just so you're aware what F 16s. So originally they got block fifth blocks. Sorry, F 16 block 15s. And then they got Singapore gave them some block 15s, but then they did the midlife upgrade in October, 2010, they decided to give the 18 airframes that are operational with the four third squadron, the middle upgrade, the youngest airframes in the Thai inventory, effectively the blast block 15 airframes that were built in, uh, 1996. Uh, so they're capable. I mean, midlife upgrade, usually, you know, pretty capable, uh, F 16s, versus MiG-29, which I don't know what what variant flavor that they have. But obviously, like you were saying, sorry, escalation of, ten, of the tensions. Yeah, it. I mean, it sounds like they were just, in this particular case, they were just uh, patrolling the border, right? So the MiG-29s launched up. They got close, like, to, their, to, to violating their airspace. So they're like, we're launching F-16s. No violation occurred. They were just kind of shadowing each other is how I kind of, I read this story. And that, that, that actually, like I, I, that actually uh, the Malaysians and Singaporeans will do stuff like that as well. I would argue that uh, you mentioned in the article earlier that uh, at one time there was a MiG-29 that did fly into the airspace. I bet that was not on purpose. <laughs> no. And, and I don't think <laughs> like, I don't think that Thailand is on the brink of war with them yeah. but i think i think a scenario would be an intercept escort to hey yeah. get get your butt back over yeah. um the mig-29s are doing close air support i mean that's weird it's not a very good aircraft for that i mean you don't have a lot of time on station you have a lot of air to ground weaponry no. you have some but not yeah. a lot no and it's that's not great yeah i mean <clears> that, yeah that's, I... that's probably why you want to escort them out because hell <laughs> yeah, we're gonna sl dropping. Yeah, yeah. You're we're gonna sling this rocking. thing. <laughs> yeah. no, you're terrible at this. Get back over there. Um, 
but yeah, yeah it just i mean tensions there everywhere um you know we were talking about this before the show i mean you really when's the last time you really heard about Myanmar, you know, I mean, it's not something you hear about a lot. Last time I heard about it was Rambo, you know, I mean, <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah. it just goes to show you there's conflicts everywhere that aren't necessarily making the mainstream. Yeah. I'll temper it with, I don't know, man, if I was a bad man, I'd say the mainstream is like, Oh, let's, let's run this article now. You know, I don't know. That's, that's yeah. the tin hat me coming up. But yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Uh, that part of the world is, beautiful <laughs> and amazing so yep uh all right moving on uh we already covered this thanks y'all mental health minute okay are we going to talk about the eclipse do you have that or my, my oh out? yeah you said you're going to show that clip okay hold on this is pretty cool uh, i put it on my uh tk Hartsock facebook page that i just started but anyways um <laughs> We got to mute it because they got some really terrible music for this. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. So, Gawky, question: yes, yes, if you fly in the middle of a eclipse, can you log night? Uh, I don't know because it's not that dark. But I, I, you know what? Why not? <laughs> if the lights are on, dude, I'm logging night. Yeah, it's it's uh yeah exactly for instrument time no, no if i close my eyes man it's nighttime so it's always nighttime and gonkies and noggin all right here we go t45 yeah it's so cool music man. so just hum tum to yourself as we listen to the sounds of the t45 instructor from the back seat look, look at, at that, that dude nighttime for sure oh he looked at it oh yeah. he's blind it's not That's service awesome. related either that's awesome oh dude that's total night that, that's that's pinky yeah you're right i'm logging it <laughs> look at that yeah Isn't that crazy yeah that is uh for the viewers on the pod or listeners on the podcast that is nighttime and now we're back to daytime or dusk no this is dusk uh, yeah and then night and then next thing you know it's going to be day again how cool is that man yeah, uh, super awesome vantage point. There was, a, I saw another one where some T38 guys did something similar and they actually got a shot. One of the 38s went up. So they got a shot of the eclipse and oh, a silhouette of a T38. Yeah. I've um, seen that with the A10 and an airliner. Yeah. And then, you know, I kind of went down the whole eclipse rabbit hole. And I don't know if you know, but uh, did, you, did you know the, the, Con the Concord in the 70s has the record? It, chased a solar eclipse oh, uh, it was in the eclipse for 72 minutes man no kidding yeah because it could it That's... was flying 1500 miles per hour so uh, it was it was basically you know just night up. yeah it's yeah. just dark it's yeah, just dark had, the whole time well they were doing all kinds of you know nerdy science stuff but um but i thought that was cool so i just you know here where i was at it's a cloudy day it got a little bit darker and then it got light again so we we got gypped on the eclipse, but uh, did you see anything where you're no, at? In dark. the bayou? It got dark outside. Yeah. Then it was napping. Yeah. I thought it was a cool video, man. Cool. I'd, I'd love to be in it. I'd love to be in a T45 at this point. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was cool. Seba says, at least if poop hits the fan now, I got to see the F-22 demo in an air show in Chile. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. That's awesome. It's a cool TDY for the Raptor guy. Yeah, no kidding. Connor Putman Thanks, Connor. says, hello, I'm in high school. and want to fly in the military. The close air support mission really interests me. I was wondering what branch you suggest I try to fly for. Marines. Mm. <laughs> oh. I still say. I, I think fly. all of them pretty much. If you're going to fly close. Air, oh, we all, I mean, we all do it. Yeah. Sadly, you're never going to fly the A-10. So you're going to be doing, he's going to be doing it in fat Amy. Pretty much no matter who he flies for. Dude, yeah. We're, everybody's close to air support. Just some are yeah. closer than others. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck, man. Make them tell yeah, you no. Good luck. Heck yeah. Don't give up. Uh, all right, dude. Speaking of the future. Yeah. Um, we talked about this last week. About the AI at Eglin. Well, yep. now 
the AI operated jet will fly Air Force Secretary, the SECAF, on test run. Air Force is betting a large part of its future air warfare on a fleet more than a thousand autonomously operated drones, and they're testing this with the top civilian leader in uh, AI operated warplane. So, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall told senators on Tuesday that he will enter the cockpit of one of the F 16s that the service has converted for drone flight to see for himself how it performs in the air. There will be a pilot with me who will just be watching, just like I will, apparently. Uh, oh, there you go. As he said, as I, as I will be, as the autonomous technology works. So here's, I'm going to stop right here. Does, I don't think he's got any aviation background. I don't That's know. So I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so realistically, how is he going to know? Like what to, to him, what is the difference between we're on autopilot and the AI is doing it other than the pilot says, Oh, the AI is doing this right now. Um, I mean, unless he's being, you know, unless there's just a running commentary from. You know, no, it's got to be. be. I mean, because be a... it's a test thing. Anyway, yeah, so he was in the Army. He was in the Army Reserve. So, I mean, perfect. Great, great, great. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so they're using the F 16 as a test. So he's basically getting a ride in a Viper, which is pretty cool. I, I don't blame him. If I yeah. was, if I was him, I'd be like, I want to ride in that one and I want to ride in all the other ones too. Just yeah, give see. me an EX ride. Yeah, just to see. With actual intelligence. <laughs> Not artificial. Yeah. Um, initial roll of the aircraft was going to be counter air, but I'll have to it'll have the potential to do other things. Perfect. Yeah, of course. Off, awfully specific. Um, the drone fleet is also expected to cheapen the development of new man jets. The current goal is to have each cost about a quarter to a third of what the F-35 costs now. And that's it. He's just going to go ride in a F-16. That's what it boils down to. Uh, and they're going to say, sir, the AI is in control right now. He wouldn't know any difference, would he? I mean, would you from the back seat? I mean, I guess. I mean, no. Right, really. I mean, like, you know, here's the thing. I can always tell an autopod's flying because it's perfect. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, well, well I think it's cool. I mean, it's always good to have your civilian leadership want to be involved in your mission. I think that's probably important yeah. to being that. Um, Dude, probably the most value out of this is not going to be the flight. It's probably going to be all the men and women he's going to be talking to who are in the program, mm -hmm. bending their ear, like kind of hearing what, you know, what the boots on the ground, if you will, think yeah. about this new technology and stuff that's coming out so i mean i think it's a good thing man like you said you, you need you need guys like him who are making the big decisions out there like seeing you know seeing stuff media attention too i mean so i guess it depends on what your thoughts are on the collaborative aircraft and ai and loyal wingman and stuff like that if you're a proponent of it which i think i am you know i, I don't want the ai to take over but having a smart wingman that is able to be sent down range and die for its country without a human dying, okay, I'll take it. And so if, if that gives us more technologies, okay. Yeah, I'm, 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 on I'm totally on board with having... If loyal slash they, sacrificial wingman. <laughs> well, and I also will offer... If they need the Mover and Gonky show to go out and test this technology, it's not far for us. It's pretty. It's a short, it's shorter for you, but I mean, three and a half hours. I'll make that drive to go observe a Viper. Yeah, man, I'll observe F-16s all day long from the from front cockpit, back cockpit, whatever, man. Oh yeah, mean, yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, if the AI has landing currency, can I? Do I, does it matter if I have landing currency or not? Yeah, who's logging this flight time? Yeah. The AI or me? <laughs> yeah. Damn it. All right. We, we've got a last minute addition to the show because I really happened to find this. Um, did you know, Gonky, all the no. technology? No. This better not be a treadmill airplane question, like another live one, or else I will bomb this thing. Dude. There's actually another one. I can't remember what it was. No, I got the one. Google up, dude. I'm not going <laughs> <laughs> to. Yeah. You know, trust me. 
Oh, Gonky, is he even a real pilot? Uh, honorable Gonky, sir. Did he fly plane? Oh, yeah. I've had people ask if I'm a real pilot. I love when people argue that the F-16 is, is you know, not the, not the Viper. So anyway, um, check this out, man. Talk yeah. about new tech. Pilots use new sensors to max out human performance. So the Air Force F-16 pilots are testing out these new sensors, so they're going to monitor you. Um... Integrated cockpit sensing system, which gets your, you know, you're an astronaut, dude. Your oxygen level, your heart rate, your breathing rate, your skin temperature, and other markers that show how their bodies are faring in flight. We wanted to be able to help the ICS team accelerate their technology through flight tests, says We Fug Lee. Dude, wait. <laughs> yes. Way Fug Lee. Way Fug Lee. Way Fug Lee. <laughs> Did they just. <laughs> ah. He's from the bayou. <laughs> you can't pronounce. <laughs> the goal is to demonstrate the ICS's ability to measure physio and environmental data and assess its utility in recognizing physiological insults. <laughs> this, contrary really? to popular belief, is a sport in all the sense of the physicality of the word, says Captain Travis Warden. He didn't have a call sign. Oh, boy. In the hazardly uh fat amy video under g-forces and mental focus of dogfight training my heart rate is going to increase my body bodily response and my temporal distortion is going to increase and you're going to see how much more difficult it becomes for me to think talk and communicate indeed his what dude his heart rate averages 50 beats per minute at rest it's pretty good dude's a runner his g tolerance must be pretty crappy but it rose to around 120 during takeoff and spiked to nearly 160 during defensive BFM. Had no idea what our heart rates are like. Just 120, you're taking off. Hmm. That uh, seems awfully high just for regular takeoff. It's because you're single engine. Heart rate's already <laughs> always, always <laughs> elevated. No, you got to include the rocket motor in the seat. You always got to. Yeah. Right? Well, so jet pilots across the military have a long struggle with hypoxia. Dehydration, mm -hmm. temporal distortion, mental exhaustion, spatial disorientation, hyperventilation. Wow, that's a new one. Mm -hmm. uh, wide range. Because we talked, we did a whole thing on physiological effects. We talked about G-forces with the flight dock. We talked about uh, hypoxia. Mm -hmm. um, it said made finding root causes extraordinarily challenging. But with this, they can. Uh, one symptom of hypoxia, the sense of euphoria. But we do that. We do that with ROBD. You know, yep. so this explains that for once these low cost innovations and they, I mean, that's good. That's great. I would wonder or worry that you find something you weren't looking for. You know, anytime <laughs> you get attached to something and they're like, Hey, yeah. hey you got a heart murmur. What? Get this stuff yeah. off me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, but they're talking about how to recognize incapacitated pilots and they might be able to integrate it with auto GCAS, which is pretty cool. Uh, but this is what it is. It's got real time monitoring, uh, oxygen sat, your three axis acceleration, your cabin altitude, heart rate, respiratory rate, core body temperature. So they know if you've got, we don't, do we still talk about the, uh, the virus, if you will? Is that still a thing? <laughs> Could have told, told way before though. Uh, humidity, oxygen. Uh, it's got all this stuff, like a bunch of stuff. <sighs> Dude. It's that. It's like that scene in Apollo thirteen. It's like get this crap off me, you know. Like I don't. Well, yeah, want... but but it says the human performance sensing system can also make pilots fly better. Data showed that his oxygen levels in his brain dropped more than expected, which could indicate he needs to improve his G strain. Well, I yeah, used, he... we used to know because the lights would go out. That's now, what I'm saying. yeah, yeah get off like one a man. Off. Yeah, it's like... gray yeah. out like everybody else. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're going to max perform humans. I want all the insights and assistance possible. Nothing's off the table. Uh, holy crap. I know this guy. Who? Alex Goldberg. He's a lieutenant colonel now. He was a casual lieutenant when I was in, uh, in the B course. Oh, man. Look at that. Look, look what you could have been. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's hypoxic situation. Maybe it's gray lock or G lock. Gray lock. Vision based off the what's happening in our bodies. We have actual monitoring us. Yeah. The only thing I like about this gonky is the oh, why do I keep doing that? Uh the it can recognize and maybe integrate something for physiological episodes like hypoxia. 
or G lock. The other stuff, eh. and even even then, because people every time I do a video about drones, they're like, "Why do we take the human out? Because humans can't pull G's." First of all, a lot of aircraft are limited by the airframe, not the pilot. Right? A lot of nine G jets are nine G jets, not nine G humans. Now, could you argue that they could pull more G's as a drone? Probably, but in the age of missiles, do you need to? Uh, it remains to be seen. So, I just I don't know. Is it too little, too late? What for all this human performance stuff? Yeah, yeah. I I just think uh, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, we're like we were joking about it. It's like, hey man, you you almost blacked out. Yeah, I know. How do you know? Well, because I lost my vision. You know, or I I, I guess it, it, it I I don't know. Man. There's a lot of data collection going on even with the modern like i remember you know, you i went to the hornet and the thing would it tell on you the super hornet was even worse like you can't hide anything in the super hornet right so if like if you came into the break way too fast you know they could just pull the data from the airplane you know i would I, you know i've gotten phone calls before uh i, was, I remember i was driving home and they're like hey sir uh, you know exactly where you were when that thing fell off your jet i'm like what I'm like oh yeah it, the code and when you came back this uh panel was i'm like no you know and then another time i came back and the i'm getting ready to walk out of maintenance and they're like hey uh you know did you notice any other uh engine issues when you had that engine stall i'm like i didn't have an engine stall he's like well yeah you did right here you know he's like to the exact second oh yeah right? <laughs> to the exact second i'm like yeah. Dude, I, I thought that was the center line tank empty kicking me in the, in well, the you floor but you, you know, know what the, I'm saying? You know, the Eagle guys will make people keep wearing it in the debrief because they'll watch the heart <laughs> watch the rate. Heart rate. Like, You're lying. <laughs> That's right. You, you didn't have a valid shot there. Yeah. I see your heart rate going up. You're yeah. lying. Well, yeah. Now they'll be able to get the jet data, match it with your physiological data and be like, no, he's clearly lying. Yeah. You know? What is what is what is happening here at time 355, sir? Yeah. I was being. Yeah, that's right. It's a half a G, half a G in a shallow left hand. Yeah. Turn. Why are you? Yeah. Where were you going right there, sir? I was in the middle of a physiological event. I don't know, man. I, I guess I'm old school. Like, get yeah. the hell out of my jet. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's that much of a, a leap there when, you know, you start with, with this and the next thing is neural. You know, because now we want to see what the brainwave activity is. And now we want to see, you know, okay, well, I mean. If this is one-off studies, like, hey, we're going to do a series of two weeks of flying with the stuff hooked up to you to learn, I'm all for it. But to, like, data gather every, like, if they could somehow put this stuff in your gear and it would just. It was not your gear. Yeah, it wasn't the gear. Okay. Uh, to hall monitor you, like, all the time, I'm. Dude, well, like it could have been used. I mean, that would have been, I mean, that's almost how they were doing it with the Raptor. Remember when the Raptor was having the, the, uh, Obox issues yeah. and they found it, it was like a piece of their gear that was constricting. And that's why they were kind of feeling that hypoxia and all that stuff. But they ended up having like pulse ox and they had to go fly with this. Cause if it got too high, you know, they had to come back. So there are scenarios where it is perfectly valid. And I agree with you. If it's data, and human factors, and it's just the limited to the 422 and the test folks, let them have it. Especially, you know, I of all people believe that, you know, if it could, could have saved my buddy's life. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, it's not, is it, it's not practical every day and you don't need it every day. You know, you don't, you're not out there pulling nine G's. You are an athlete, but you're an athlete a couple times a month usually you know you've got other missions you're doing or if you do phase-based training or whatever you know one month out of you know the last three months you're doing bfm the rest of the time you're out there doing something else oh dude and you know like the air force would be like well in order to be bfm qualified your heart rate can be i mean like i could just see an entire laundry list of oh dude like stuff and it's like you know sometimes man data doesn't match reality i'm sorry <laughs> so i don't i don't know I'm all well, for it, you know, for testing and 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 safety and stuff. But I, I am against it. You know, I don't ever want a camera following me around all the time. Not because I'm doing anything wrong. I just don't want the camera following me. 
But I, I just, I mean, that guy's vitals, you know, 50 resting heart rate. He's having, he is a runner and his G tolerance is not going to be the smoker with the 70 resting heart rate whose yes. blood pressure is much higher. So just yeah. different. Luna's left the chat. <laughs> she gave up. Um, all right, dude. Well, I don't have any more questions. What? Is the middle of minute, dude. I don't know, man. <clears throat> we didn't have one. We just might not have one today, man. I mean, honestly, like you said, this whole episode for you, you've got a lot of things going on. You might, you know, you, you're probably going to be doing some flying in the future. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so, you know, Luna's going to be in a boarding house for periods of hey, time. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay. I Take just, it back. I can't. It's because it's it, it's true, right? So Take it back. Flying stressful mover. Uh, that's it. We'll do we'll talk about a mental health minute next time. Yeah. We had a, uh, we had this a week's run. this week's mental health minute procrastination <laughs> and we're going to wait next <laughs> we're going to do it next week. We had a pretty pretty uh pretty aggressive weekend, so at yeah, least I, I did. Man. Yeah, dude, stop bullying my dog. She left. I'm not bullying. She left, and then I said the things that I said. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about why Gonky likes to bully. I don't bully, dude. Uh, no. Gattaca. Gattaca. Gattaca? That's what MJ says, Gattaca. You make fun of me, but you don't have to pronounce all these things, Gonky. Gattaca? I just did. No, the other stuff. <laughs> Whaley oh. or whatever. Well, I didn't pick any articles that have hard words. <laughs> you barely <laughs> picked any articles. I had to pick the articles. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. oh, boy. <laughs> oh, the price is real high. <laughs> real high. It have, I mean, uh, it have uh, Let's think about this, Gonky. So... <laughs> <laughs> There is a way. I don't want to say, don't want to say uh, too much. Well, here's the thing. So the the aforementioned Luna boarding issue could be resolved with raising enough money. <laughs> I, I think I just found my out. Yeah. No, it's cool. I, I will yeah. reveal Gonky's secret. Yeah. No, don't reveal. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, hey, we might finish this at two. Well, it's already been two hours. Close to two hours. What you guys yeah. say, man? We got anything well, else? I, uh, hey, I'll plug uh, Casmo's. I'm going to be on Casmo's uh, show tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I don't know. My wife was like, oh, do you have to prepare? I'm like, I, what is that? Um, so you don't I prepare don't, for this show. Why would you prepare for I that one? do prepare for this show, man. I don't know about that. I'm just, that's, of course I do. Um, yeah, but I'm going to be on Casmo's uh, show tomorrow, so I have no idea. I, hopefully it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sunday, we will be a part of the Fox 3 DCS tournament. Yeah, what time is that? 6 p.m., right? 36 something. Yeah, Shang Shanghai will be there too, right? Shanghai will be there. Well, because it's an event. It's like a three-day event. We're catching up at the end. Yeah. I don't know when Shanghai is going to be there, but somewhere in the end. Hey, you did uh, you did uh, the show with Casmo. What time? What time was that? Do you remember? Cal says thanks for the amazing show, gentlemen. Thank you, Cal. Thanks, Cal. Same. It's the same. It's the exact same. Yeah, it it okay. lasted two hours. Is exact. I mean, carbon okay. copy except on Tuesday. And I got you. Do we did he didn't do articles? Good. <laughs> so all it all it is is exactly so it's 8 p.m eastern casmo's channel and enjoy if you want to find the dcs tournament it's fox3ms.com and then somewhere on their website so yep we got shirts awesome and then today uh you've got till midnight to sign up for mesa's course oh and to pay your taxes Oh yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why I'm in such a bad mood. <laughs> I just thought of that. Sorry. 
Thanks, Gonk. You ruin it right before bedtime. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah. The, the emphasis there was Mace, not taxes. So why did you mean. associate poor Mace with taxes? Well, when you said I thought you were going to say taxes, when you said, you know, <clears throat> to, today's the deadline, I was like, oh, for taxes. And you said for Mace's course. Which, yeah, Mace's thing. Uh, the badass mastery class. Master class. Sorry. Badass master class. How to be a badass in six weeks. Uh, all right. Well, that's all I got. Gonky, anything else? No, no, man. Nope. Nope. I appreciate everybody for sticking with us. We didn't have, we didn't have Doug, Doug's magic in the background. So no Doug, no, no guest, Doug. just no us. Guest, just us. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Probably See you guys have a good, have Later. a good one.